Okay, I'll give you a quick introduction to the idea of a phase line. Uh, let's start with this example equation, dp dt is p times 1 minus p. This is a simple enough example that will uh, contain a lot of the ideas that would occur in more complicated examples. Uh, so first, I've drawn the slope field for you. Let's just take a quick look at this slope field, observe some features of it. Uh, one feature is that there's an equilibrium at 0, and there's also an equilibrium here at 1. I'll mark in 1. This is p equals 1, and this is p equals 0. Okay. Uh, in between 0 and 1, the solution will be growing, growing up to 1. Above 1, it'll be shrinking down to 1. Below 0, it shrinks down to minus infinity. So um, the observation that leads us to a phase line, or one, one example type of observation that would, is to take this slope field and to collapse all of the redundant information out of it. So you see that as I move left and right, because this is an autonomous equation, uh, I don't change the slope field. So let's take this whole picture and let's squish it down and see if we can convey that same information in a single line. And this will be the phase line. So let me draw it here. Here's the phase line, P. I'll mark in the equilibria. This is P equals 1, and there's P equals 0. Great. So those are two equilibrium, equilibrium values. If I start at that value, I stay at that value. Now, in between P equals 0 and 1, you see from the slope field, the solutions will be growing. And so I'll make a little arrow that says up. If I start out in between 0 and 1, I will go up toward 1. If I start out above 1, I will go down toward 1. If I start out below 0, I will go down toward minus infinity. This is it. We have drawn our phase line. It contains basically all of the qualitative features that the slope field contains. Obviously, I can't plot my solutions on the phase line, but you can imagine that a solution that looks like this, that goes through the slope field, this static picture of the graph of the solution, you could imagine it as being a, a little particle that, as time evolves, would move up along this phase line and head toward p equals 1, if you were watching an animation of the motion of, the, of that particle over time. OK, great. So um, let's do a quick. Uh, sort of analysis of these two points here, uh, at the two equilibrium points, 1 and 0. Um, if I uh, look at 1 first, you'll notice that all of, the, all of the information, anywhere I start around 1, I will tend toward 1. So it's kind of like the bottom of a valley or something like that. If I'm a little bit below 1, I tend toward it. If I'm a little bit above 1, I tend toward it. So you think of this like, like a stable point or the, you know, some place where everything kind of rolls toward it. So this is called a stable equilibrium. On the other hand, this one is not stable. You see that if I start a little bit of, on either side of p equals 0, I will roll off of it. It's like the top of a mountain. So this is an unstable equilibrium. OK, great. Uh, now I'll just quickly give you something called uh, the metaphor of the rope, which is sort of interesting. Think of the phase line like a rope. And the, the differential equation dp dt is p times 1 minus p. This is like your, your gym instructor down on the ground yelling at you instructions as to how to climb this rope. And so the gym instructor, instructor can observe what the value of p is, where you are on this rope. And, and he's going to yell out whether you should go up or down and how fast you should go up or down. So for example, if you start out right here, he's going to yell out what dp dt is based on your value of p, and then you're going to have to climb at that rate to, go, to follow that phase line. And so for instance, if you were at p equals 1, he would yell out, stay where you are, because you're at an equilibrium. If you were above it, up here, he would yell out what dp dt is, and you would then move down that phase line. So this is, the, uh, this is the metaphor of the rope, sort of another way of, of thinking of the information that the phase line contains. OK, so I've got a little example here that kind of reinforce our knowledge of the phase line. So the question is, what equations would give uh, the following phase line? Now you might notice something right off the bat, and that is that this, I've, I've taken this thing and I've laid it on its side. So this was the phase line where I'm thinking of this as being a squashing of the whole, whole slope field for an autonomous equation down to the single line. Well, it's just a line. I can draw it however I want. 
So I just took the whole thing, plopped it on its side, and it doesn't matter how I draw it, as long as it's clear which direction is increasing P and which one is decreasing. So um, I got this phase line on its side, I drew in three equilibria, and I've got my little arrows indicating the direction that I'll move, so for instance the direction the uh, gym instructor is yelling at me to climb on the rope, uh, in between each of the equilibria. So what equation would give this phase line? best way to do this, I think, is to write down a, a graph of the possible rate function and then try to construct the equation from that. So if this was my phase line, I would have a rate function, in other words, dp dt versus p. Well, that rate function would have to have zeros at 0, 1, and 2. So this is, this is p equals 0, p equals 1, p equals 2. Now, below p equals 0, dp dt is negative. So I'd have to be down here. Between 0 and 1, it's positive. It's growing. So I'm up above. Come back down to 0 at 1, and then I'm negative again. And then I uh, go back up above until I hit, uh, sorry, negative from 1 to 2. And then when I hit 2, I'm now positive from there on out. So I'm growing. So that's my possible rate function. Now, you could construct a cubic polynomial that does this pretty easily just by its roots and checking and making sure it has the right sign in between those roots. So let's do that. dp dt could be equal to, I've got roots at 0, 1, and 2, so I'll say p times p minus 1 times p minus 2. And you can check that this polynomial looks like this, just qualitatively speaking, just looks like this, this excuse me, this curve. And so this equation will have a, uh, a phase line which looks exactly like that. Great. So now, uh, one thing we could do is modify this a little bit and see if we can solve the problem again. So I invite you to try to make a modification of this. For instance, you could insert an equ another equilibrium. Uh, or you could do the following. You could take one of these arrows and turn it around. So for example, instead of this being down, turn this arrow around make it growing. So now the rate function needs to be positive back here. So just construct some examples, make sure that you have a good handle on how this phase line comes from the equation and how you can also draw a picture of the rate function and get between the rate function uh, graph and the, uh, the, the phase line.